Panelites Podcast. Kyle here with Jeremiah for the first time in a very long time. Panelites Podcast. Time in a long time. My heart has been in pieces waiting for this moment. You left me with two, I don't know what to call them. <laughs> Helpful <laughs> hands. <laughs> talk over each other. It makes things so difficult. Anyway, you're back. First time doing it married. Well, that's <laughs> right. And you know what? I want to start with that. Let's just oh, jump boy. right into that. And I don't normally make things personal on here because, you know, it's the internet. But let's just do a little bit of personal. So you had a beautiful wedding. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming all the way up. I did. It was an adventure and I made it and it was perfect. <laughs> a big adventure for you. A bigger <laughs> adventure for you than most. It was, that uh, yes. But I made it. And there I viewed many things, many subtle things that one would say were quite nerdy. So if you could, off the top of your head, list every comic book related thing that you got into your wedding because it was done so tastefully and there was little things i caught later on like facebook pictures and just if you could share that real quick i had to do it tastefully because the wife wanted her wedding to be a normal wedding yes but it have been a wedding right <laughs> yeah we wanted it to be about us and comics are a big part about my life and it's actually kind of how we met a little bit, but the first thing that I did is I got permission from Paulo. He does stickers with most of his orders and he does little head sketches that he sells for a comic art live every year. This year, four of them went for a very, very pretty penny and I got to watch that auction. But usually when he does those head sketches, he turns them into stickers. And I asked his permission if I could use a couple of them as the table numbers for my wedding. So instead of having table numbers, we had comic book characters, which was really funny because I tried to use generic characters the only quote-unquote not generic character that we used was grogu but it was a small wedding so our table numbers were daredevil spider-man iron man wolverine hulk and grogu not in that specific order and when we submitted the tables to the venue the coordinator didn't know who any of these people were so she's like you got to put numbers with it please i put the numbers in the order that they were supposed to go and then turns out two of the servers who were serving us were comic book fans. So on the serving chart that they got, they wrote the characters' names, mm. which was really awesome. I got to see that, which was really cool. So the table numbers and everyone's card, instead of having the number, had the character on it. Then I had comic book cufflinks. All my groomsmen had cufflinks. I had Daredevil. And then going down the line was Doctor Strange, Hulk, Star-Lord, Vision, and Spider-Man for my groomsmen. I quoted Spider-Man in my vows. Did. Specifically, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 2, Issue Number 53 by J. Michael Straczynski and John Romita Jr. And the thing that most people don't know is the quote that I did, which is simply, here's the thing, God, I know me and you, we have our problems, but just for tonight, thank you for her. Thank you. It was something that Peter just said in a caption in a panel after him and MJ did it. Oh, <laughs> post cordal Peter talking to God is what yes, I quoted. In my, okay. I cried like a crazy person. I cried very, very hard when I saw my wife for the first time. Yeah, uh, I have photos of it. I zoomed in and cropped just your face. Was thinking of using it as my profile picture on Instagram for the next month, but I didn't know if you'd like that. So <laughs> I, I'm a way uglier crier than I thought I was. Fantastic. I think that was everything comics related. I was able to sneak in to the your, wedding. Your nephew. Oh, I was not aware of this. I you was were not, not but that was perfect. <laughs> yes, my 10-year-old nephew wanted to give a speech on my wedding, and we allowed him to, and it was very short and sweet but he littered it with comic book references he quoted iron man from the movies and he tweaked spider-man's quote with great power comes great responsibility he changed it to with great love comes great responsibility which i greatly appreciated uh, he was so proud of that so <laughs> yeah that he did was well like, too He's good, yeah good public he, speaker he practiced apparently like over 30 times the night oh, before well, <laughs> to that, it, up. it was worth it flawless he was very happy to be a part of the wedding, and I was happy to have him part of the wedding, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great day. I was shocked at how well it went. I mean, the weather was perfect. I was yeah. in a full suit, and it's, you know, summertime, and we were outside, and I didn't sweat. Yeah, it was, it was I didn't sweat just perfect. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice in one photo, I believe it was your rehearsal dinner, you were wearing a Valiant tie. 
I was. That was the rehearsal dinner. Yeah, I have. I, I have a valiant up. tie. Didn't um, know those would exist. <laughs> they were. You said it was custom. I'd believe you. No, they were promotional giveaways. I managed to wrangle one a long time ago. That was the first time I ever got to wear it. Before we jump into it, you got a package from Hasbro. Oh, I did. I did. I made a TikTok. I made a TikTok. I should have made a nicer TikTok thanking them. Because the way I got it was from a not-so-nice TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> but the not-so-nice TikTok was really funny because you were bullied into opening up an action figure. And as someone who pretty much opens up all of his action figures, with the exception of I stare at three during every podcast that are still on card, but the rest of them are open. And the only reason why these three are on card is because I have an open version of all three of them except for one because it's super rare. I was also bullying you to open it up. Yes, uh, you So were. you opened up your limited edition Wolverine. I did and it can't dance no so i made the first video being like all right it's only cardboard i might have to open it i slit the tape started to pull them out and was like there's no way i could get him back in this box the same way like he's in tissue paper practically and i shoved it back in and that video got 10,000 views <laughs> and about 40 comments screaming at me to open it so i was like all right they made a valid point i did cut the tape right mm -hmm. so then i made a second video maybe three, 4,000 views. I opened it and that was that. And I put it on the shelf. And then for some reason, the next TikTok I made, I'm looking at him because I put him in a sitting position. Like his feet look weird. Two right feet. He I've never <laughs> in my life seen an action figure with two right feet. The printing on the feet were identical because the feet from the knee down is identical. It had the maker's mark on the bottom of it, right? <laughs> so here's the funny thing right i write to hasbro and they kind of were just like general customer service so then i sent them a tiktok of me saying like you said in my attempt to be funny you bullied me to open it and look he's got two right feet i sent them that video and that's when the tone changed and they were like we'll refund you and just send it back i said no that's no fun and they're like okay we'll send you something in between this, they actually made me fill out paperwork. The funny thing about the paperwork is I had to take a photo. I had to take a photo of him next to the reference number. I had to put in every serial number from the barcode to his foot, to his back leg, everything. I had to do all this information, right? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I do all this information. And I was like, you know what? They basically told me they're going to give me something. So I'll go along with this. But the funny part is half the information I couldn't get because it was on the left foot. <laughs> and it was at that point where i just was like as you know <laughs> i can't give you that so i hope it's still okay so this form cannot be filled out for the missing limb yes. in question that's super fucking funny yeah. that you had to fill out information and you were missing it because of the foot but they did send you a beautiful beautiful yeah, 20th no, they anniversary iron surprised man me. Yeah, so yeah i didn't even know it existed and you were gonna explain to me what precious item I have, because I think it's worth more than I realized too. So this is of the original Legends series, like a remake? It's 20 year anniversary of Legends, 2002 when Toy Biz first released them. Now they're under Hasbro, so it's a whole different ball game. But they're re-releasing the first line, which I always loved that the first line of Marvel Legends was kind of weird because you've got three very staple characters and one not so much. So you get the the very first legend that was released, I believe was Iron Man, followed okay. immediately by Hulk and then Cap and Toad. The Brotherhood of Evil Mutants Toad, for those of you who don't know, the one that Halle Berry lit up with lightning in the first X-Men oh. movie. It was the comic book version, so he looks even worse and terrible articulation of that toad but it's still one of the most beautiful ugly figures that legends ever released and it's being re-released with this 20 year run i'm curious how many of these waves are going to do like are they just doing the first wave because it's the 20 year anniversary are we going to keep going because the spider-man classics line is fucking brilliant Right. And they need to keep this shit going as long as possible, I feel. Of course, they need to keep going until they re-release Ben Riley Scarlet Spider so I can get that because I'm not getting the Marvel <laughs> Legends. That thing is, what, $120 right now? And I'm a loose collector, too. So I'll collect it loose. Right. And I'm not paying $120 for a loose figure. So here's the next question. Obviously, the packaging isn't exactly the same right, as the early 2000s Legends. Weren't they all plastic? The yeah. whole thing was like this thick plastic, right? 
Uh huh. Is that one different? So this one, the whole back is cardboard. That's better though. It's gonna hold up better. It's not no, gonna like, yellow over time. The original, I mean, we're not visually doing it, but yeah, this is the Spider-Man Classics line, which was released, right. I think, a year after the fact. No, this was before. <laughs> the Spider-Man Classics line was before Marvel Legends. Oh wow. So yeah, the whole clamshell is plastic, and the only figure that I have mint on card that I don't have loose. Really, it's really cool. Uh, and it is the yellow variant of the Daredevil from the Spider-Man Classics line. I think this is the second wave, which was a 1 in 10. The clamshell's been in better shape. But this is between a $60 and $110 figure uh, most days. But the only figures that I have on card, I do have the symbiote Spider-Man just because I bought an extra. But all of the figures I have on card are yellow Daredevil. That makes sense. Which kind of segues into something else. When Hasbro took over Marvel Legends after Toy Biz went, they released this variant. It was a running line change of this yellow Daredevil. Mm -hmm. And this is the worst yellow Daredevil there is. But specifically on the card, this card has seen better days. But it contains three images of the wonderful and unfortunately late Tim Sale artwork from oh. his daredevil yellow series okay yeah we could take that turn i did want you to talk about him you know way more i mean generally you know way more about everything yeah if you want to do a little thing for tim sale i would much appreciate it because i'm sure there's a lot i don't even know tim sale was such a fantastic person and such a fantastic artist the things that he's probably going to be most remembered for is his runs with batman and his runs on the marvel color series so the marvel color series was Daredevil Yellow, Spider-Man Blue, Hulk Gray, and Captain America White, where he did that with his partner, Jeff Loeb, who was the writer, and then their three runs on Batman, which was Long Halloween, which is probably going to be the greatest Batman story of all time, Come At Me Bro, Dark Victory, and Haunted Night. Long Halloween, I will say that Tim Sale's Batman is the best Batman ever. And that includes, unfortunately, another past artist within Neil Adams, but we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, Tim Sale's Batman, the way he does the ears, the way he does the shadows, his artwork will just live on forever. It's unfortunate. It has been made public knowledge. He passed away from kidney disease that he's had for a long time. We've known about it for a long time. And uh, there was a very heartfelt story that Bill Sienkiewicz shared that I would just like to touch on for a moment. We've talked about it with Terry Moore, how Bill Sienkiewicz does an incredible job with his memorial portraits that he does every time that someone of note passes away bill sinkevich will do a memorial portrait of them tim had a really good friend named richard who was by his side for the majority of his last few weeks and tim made a comment about not being able to see bill's portrait of him so richard actually asked bill to do it early oh wow and bill was terrified of the request uh, but granted it because tim was such a good friend and tim did get to see it before he passed, which uh, just a little bit warmer on the inside, knowing that he got to see the portrait that Bill did for him and Bill did an incredible job of it. His beloved Mariners were paid respect to it because Tim's wearing a Mariners hat in the portrait. If, if you've never read the Marvel color series, Daredevil, Yellow, Spider-Man, Blue, Hulk, Gray, or Captain America, White. They are some of the best comics ever put to print in terms of Marvel comics. All of them are main character love letters to past people. Daredevil's is to Karen, Spider-Man's is to Gwen, Hulk's is to Betty, and the twist that I love with Captain America, White's is it's to Bucky. Yeah. Every one of them is so good. The Spider-Man one will have you weeping <laughs> if you read it. It is... Oh. And he also was a prolific cover artist he did so many covers so many incredible covers like from detective comics 647 to detective comics 696 he did i think every other cover or if not every two covers just fantastic batman work queen and country which is now a tv show he did all the covers for queen and country oh, okay. uh, he did a one shot in 1994 which to this day he would get a check once a year from marvel for one book that he did and he would go on vacation with it because that's how much the check was every year so in 1994 he did a one shot <laughs> with jeff Loeb, wolverine and gambit that so... sold like fucking hot wow. <laughs> he was just so kind he always took the time usually if you got something signed with batman he would do a quick remark and it's just beautiful even though it's so simple my last interaction with him had to be 2016 
New York. I remember it very vividly because he gets done signing my friend Derek's book. And as we're walking away, he just goes, go Bernie! <laughs> because it was during the political time. Right, right. But that just shows you like how good of a person Tim was. He will be sorely, sorely missed. Gone too soon at 66. Two other creators have passed away. One that we have known coming for a long time, unfortunately, was the late George Perez. George was a fucking legend and forever will be a fucking legend literally the nicest guy you will ever meet he wanted to hug and smile with every person that's ever came to his table his wife used to sell him all of his shirts and just the books that he actually worked on he relaunched the teen titans he created deathstroke he created nightwing he did a very terrible issue of the avengers but <laughs> He had an amazing run on the Avengers. He had an amazing run on Teen Titans. And what he's most known for is he saved fucking Wonder Woman. He fucking saved her. They were going to completely cancel her series. And no one else wanted to work on her. And he asked for it. Really? And he asked for it because he knew he could do something well with it. And they would just leave him the hell alone. And... George Perez's run on Wonder Woman is one of the greatest comics runs of all time. Without hesitation, there's no hyperbole about it. It is one of the greatest comic book runs of all time. So much of Wonder Woman's mythos comes from what George did. And if you're reading Historia right now, which is fucking fantastic, it's all to George. It's a love letter to George and what he did with Wonder Woman. He often would just sketch at cons and just be the, the nicest person in the world. Very interesting recent information that I've found because I am doing a lot of research for a side project that I'm working on that is also a podcast. But you have a book by George that you're going to get graded. What is that book? That is Avengers versus the Justice League. Or did I say that backwards? No, you're right. JLA versus Avengers or Avengers versus Justice League because it was a four issue miniseries and I believe they swapped titles halfway through, which came out in 1994. It was the last time that Marvel and DC has ever worked together and they recently got together to release it again in trade paperback form before George passed, which is the first time they've worked together in almost 30 years that tells you two companies who hate each other got right, together right. to honor George. Well, it was released in 1994. George was supposed to do it in 1981. Really? George was picked to do it in 1981, and it just fell apart. Like, he started working on it, and DC and Marvel could not agree, could not agree, could not agree, and so they just completely shelved it, completely wow. forgot about it. Industry starts falling apart in the early 90s. They say, we need to do this, and George put his fucking foot down. He's like, you told me I could do this. I'm going to fucking do this. And, like, he was the kindest person in the world, and... The world is slightly darker now. I cried very, very hard on my drive home from work when I found out that George had passed. And just a few days prior to George's passing was the unexpected passing of Batman legend and, again, comics legend Neil Adams. Neil was a titan of the industry. You can't look at Batman and not think of Neil Adams. He got his start on X-Men, and he asked specifically what was the lowest selling title at the time when he showed up at Marvel and they said X-Men. He's like, I'll take it. And they oh. said, why do you want that? He's like, cause you're going to leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like artists just want to be left alone. Yeah. <laughs> it's really what they want to do. Neil was great. Whenever you went to a con, he was always telling stories. He took up a lot of space at cons. Most artists, have a table he usually had four or five mm -hmm. selling art prints and doing art sketches he was super friendly with his time my favorite fact about neil adams and this is just a, a funny little thing he became such an important figure in comics the reason why artists get their artwork back is because of neil mm. neil went to bat for creators saying if you're not going to increase our page rates at least give us the original art back so we can sell the original art right. it's because of neil adams that jack kirby got back 2000 pages from marvel which is nowhere near as many pages as he should have gotten he should have gotten like 10,000 pages but it's because of neil's work in the industry and fighting for creator rights and how important creator rights were to him he did more for the industry than almost any creator during his time but his first ever published work is Archie Comics, The Fly, issue number nine. And the thing about it is, in his first published artwork, he did one panel. He showed up at Archie Comics with his demo pages. He took home a script, they were doing demo pages, and he just drops them off and hoping to hear back that he's gonna get a job. After two weeks of not hearing back, he comes back, asks for his pages back, and when he receives them back, there is a panel cut out of his sample pages. <laughs> and he asked what it was about, and I forgot the artist who was on the actual book. He couldn't get the transformation from the fly right, but you did it better. So we just cut it out and pasted it on his board. Oh, 
Wow. <laughs> Nowadays, huge no-no. Back in 1968, they weren't nearly as strict about it. But yeah, a titan of this industry who will forever be one of the names that is often mentioned when you think about the greats, Neil Adams. His first ever <laughs> published work was a panel that was cut out of demo pages. Jesus. So more and more creators are passing away, unfortunately. It's two things, unfortunately. We're in the time period where this community has gone on for so long and this industry has gone on for so long that these creators are just older now. But that wasn't the case with Tim. That wasn't the case with George. Both of them were sick, which is very unfortunate. And with Neil, he was 80, should have lived longer. But these three creators, as well as countless others who have already passed away, just cement how great this community is and what it's done for itself. And when you think of Neil, think of what he did for creators' rights. When you think of George, think of what he did for Wonder Woman and other representation in comics. And when you think of Tim Sale, just think of kind, heartfelt, powerful artwork. The three of them will dearly be missed and condolences to their families and their fans. Very well said. That was a very sad segment. The segue is jeremiah the encyclopedia segment if you could just give a brief explanation slash history of wonder man due to the fact that a rumor has been going around of him getting a show i know very little i think the only thing i've read him in was uncanny avengers which i do not believe did him justice in any fashion so if you could just give me some background info and for a lot of people who probably aren't too familiar so wonder man is actually a very important part of one of my favorite comic books of all time, which is the Marvel graphic novel Emperor Doom. If you haven't read Emperor Doom, please do. It's fan. Dave Michelini and Bob Hall do this amazing story. Anyways, Wonder Man first appeared, I want to say, in Avengers issue number nine. And I could be wrong with that, but I believe it was Avengers issue number nine. And like most great Avengers, he started out as a villain. So I believe he is technically pure energy. So super strength. He's one of the few people that has ever wielded Molnir. Just oh, I didn't straight, know that. You can pick that motherfucker up. No problem. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And I believe he's immortal because not only is he an Avenger for a very, very long time, but he eventually becomes a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, specifically in the year 3000. If you read old Guardians of the Galaxy, the character Hollywood is actually Wonder Man. I've heard that name used around him and I've heard the energy thing. Yep. But that's about it so far. <laughs> so Ultron. Okay. <laughs> Ultron's brain pattern is whose? Do you know this trivia question? Yes, that's Hank Pym's. Good job. Ultron then mm -hmm. created Vision. Mm -hmm. Vision's brain pattern is who? Oh, boy. Isn't it a combination of two things or no? No, no. just ripped from one person directly. I have no idea, though. Simon Williams, which is Wonder Man. Oh. Wonder Man's brain pattern is Vision's brain pattern. He ripped it straight from him. So, who is Wonder Man's ex-girlfriend? Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, yeah. That's the reason why Scarlet falls in love with Vision is because he's the same person mentally as Simon is. And then Simon went away for a long time and then fell in love. It also is the backbone to the first storyline in your favorite writer's Vision storyline because Simon Williams' brother is the villain Grim Reaper. That was an Uncanny Avengers. Yes, it was an Uncanny Avengers. But yeah, when Virginia kills Grim Reaper and buries him in the backyard in spoilers for tom king's vision which is fantastic you should have already read it and gabriel nice. hernandez walter deserves all the awards but yeah that's wonder man in a nutshell a villain an avenger pretty much immortal if he does get a show it's going to be really interesting because he was a movie actor for a while in the comics it'll be interesting to see how they bring about him i can't for the life of me remember how he got his powers i'm drawing a blank on that currently but nathan fillion's too old to play him now so i really don't want to see mm, him because yeah. he for years everyone has been clamoring for nathan fillion to play wonder man so if i were to pick someone right now henry cavill zach braff who plays shazam he would be a great wonder man or maybe we could get someone completely out of left field Right, um, made of energy, what's the difference, right? Well, his face has got to look like it was sculpted from marble because that's like a Wonder Man thing. Is He's just gorgeous. Gotcha. And he was never given his just due. I think he's only ever had two series and neither of them lasted longer than eight issues. I could be wrong, but his first series was a four-part limited in 1983. And then I know he had a 90s run. I want to say it was 92, but I don't think it went more than eight issues. So speaking of Marvel Legends, oh, Legendary Rider series, there was a running line change where he was his normal self and then he was his plasma purple self. And that purple legend is gorgeous. Oh my God. Mm. It's one of my favorites as a kid. I don't have it anymore, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see why, why Wonder Man? I don't know. Because they're running out. 
That's why. I do not. So if you want to be more inclusive, if you want to expand, Wonder Man is an interesting choice. One of my favorite gags ever in a Marvel comic. Marvel Comics What If number 34 from the second volume is just a humor book. It's just Mm -hmm. a bunch of like two panel jokes one of them is what if black bolt had a talk show and (laughs) there's one that has luke cage drawn as a girl and simon williams drawn as a woman and it said what if power man was a girl and wonder man was a woman and it has stanley coming up from the bottom of the panel like no don't print this we'll get in trouble power girl and wonder woman but right right yeah, I don't know why they would give him his own show. I mean, then they're talking about Star Fox getting a movie, so. Oh, Star Fox. Star Fox makes sense, though. Star Fox makes a lot of sense because you got tied in with the Internals. He's a brother of Thanos. And C, uh, he's a part of one of the worst storylines ever with She-Hulk. So, <laughs> mm. Yeah, Star Fox has the ability to control pleasure in someone's body. Oh, that's a dangerous thing to do. Uh-huh. And there is a, I want to say, three-issue run on Dan Slott's She-Hulk that deals with him being sued and She-Hulk is defending him. It's not a good look. Yeah, I don't... Mm. And Greg Horn does the covers for those. This was mid-2000s, so it doesn't make it any better, but it it at least gives a little bit of explanation. Right. It also hurts the translation into film now, because what are they really going to base it off of? Because source material is king, unless... It's cringy. <laughs> I mean, if you want anyone to play a superhero that can control the pleasure in someone's body, don't you want it to be Harry Styles? That's a very solid point. That is how I want to end the episode. <laughs> I want nothing else but that. <laughs> Panelites podcast. Panelites podcast. The rehearsal dinner was a shit show. We were on a boat cruise. The boat fits about 200 people. And so our rehearsal dinner was only like 30 people, but they gave us like the whole top floor. And so the whole bottom floor was normal people. My nephew was the only child on the entire boat, apparently. So he's the only one who ordered a kid's meal. So when food arrived, all the adults got their food. The one kid's meal did not make it on the boat. Oh no. So they told him that they were going to have mac and cheese. They were going to speedboat the mac and cheese out to us. Boat cruise is about a two-hour long boat cruise. Food is served about 40 minutes in. About an hour and 20 minutes in is when this speedboat comes blaring up the lake. And my nephew's going ape shit. He's so excited. He thinks this is the coolest thing in the world. This, like, special mission to get his mac and cheese to him. And they nearly drop it in the lake. It was, like, a horrible handoff, but everything went fine. They got it to him. He sits down, takes one bite of it, and almost throws up. Oh, no. My nephew has a terrible palate. He has a terrible palate. I was like, you can't do that. Like, you can't not eat this now. And so then I took a bite of it, and it was without a doubt the worst thing I've ever had in my mouth. I was shocked at how bad it was. Like, it's mac and cheese. How hard is it to fuck up? They managed to. They managed to fuck it up. Did they not cook it or something? Was it frozen? There was, like, flour in it. What? Yeah, do fucking craft. You don't have to be fancy with mac and cheese. We ended up passing it around to all of our guests to taste how bad this is. So, like, the only thing that makes the Mission Impossible mac and cheese story better is that it was terrible. (laughs) So, the boat was lovely, the night was lovely, but the food wasn't great.